Today, we're announcing 32 new cases of COVID-19, bringing the total number of confirmed cases in Nova Scotia to 342. There are currently 11 individuals in hospital, five of those in the ICU, and, and the other four are in a, 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 don't require that intensive level of care. 72 people have recovered, which is really good news. Uh, to date, we've had 11,346 Nova Scotians tested and have had negative results. Uh, now that we have removed travel from the screening requirements, and I'll, I'll, I'll expand upon that in just a minute, we certainly going to expect that more and more Nova Scotians will, will meet the criteria for testing, uh, and, and, and that, that's actually a good news. One of the key pieces, as you've heard me talk about this, is that we need to uh, have a low threshold of testing people, and, and if they're positive, we'll, uh, we, we, we work closely with them uh, to have them isolated, work with their close contacts, have those contacts isolated. That's one of the key reasons of how we break the cycle of, of transmission uh, by having that uh, rapid or broad access to testing and rapid follow-up. With the elimination of travel, we have expanded the list of symptoms that we are using for screening for COVID-19. And this is based on as we get more and more experience uh, globally, as well as in, in Canada, uh, understanding what are the symptoms that people with COVID-19 are likely to uh, present with. Uh, initially, when we did our screening, we had travel uh, along with a, a, a history of a fever or cough. Now, if people are concerned and they, they, about they have COVID and they go to the eight, online 811 uh, website or uh, where screenings happening at, at other places potentially, we're looking at uh, the symptoms are fever, new or worsening cough, uh, headache, sore throat, and runny nose. If people have two or more of those symptoms, there's a possibility they may have COVID infection and we want them, those are the people we're looking to be tested. So again, the process is if people are concerned that they may have COVID infection, if, if at all possible, if they have access uh, uh, to the internet, going on to the 811 website, doing their online screening, and, and, and then they'll be directed for further telephone screening and then possibly testing as, as necessary through that online assessment know that some Nova Scotians don't have that. Uh, so if you don't have access to the online, by all means, call 811. Uh, but if at all possible, do the online screening uh, first. Uh, and as we've, built, we've you've heard me talk about, we've, we've substantially built our capacity in the lab. We've built our capacity and the ability to manage people and test them through the assessment center. And that we have uh, public health staff have all been deployed. The, the, really the only piece of work now that's happening through public health uh, is, is following up of, of cases. We also follow up all the negative cases to make sure they are they get informed of the result and they have an opportunity to have a, ask any questions they may have and, and further direction they may need. I spoke initially when we first started testing for COVID-19 in Nova Scotia that uh, when we have information to share with the public, you will hear directly from from us through these daily briefings. Uh, I want people to understand that because we continue to have uh, questions about rumors about this case or rumors about this death that uh, you, please use this place, these daily briefings, as well as our online website where we have information as a source of truth around uh, COVID-19. We have a process that all the information about new cases and, and any deaths that may occur, that local public health has all that information. It is passed into the epidemiologists in the department, uh, usually by, you know, by early, early morning. Those numbers are the numbers that we use uh, for our, uh, that are made public on our website, and they're the numbers we use at, at, these, at these three o'clock uh, daily briefings. Things may happen between in the later on in the morning or even in the early afternoon each day that uh, people may hear about, but we have not had a chance to do the work within public health to follow up a case or to validate and investigate a case or even a death to make sure that, it, that, it, that they are actually related to COVID. So we would not talk about those until they were confirmed and it would likely be included in the numbers in, in the next day. 
I'm focusing on this because it's important that we don't, uh, I think the media has to understand this and play a role in this. We don't want unnecessary, unvalidated rumors about somebody having COVID-19 or even somebody may have died of COVID-19 circulating around. Uh, we need to respect families uh, that are dealing with difficult information potentially. When the information is investigated and validated, you will hear it th uh, here and it will be on, on our website. I'm just going to finish off today uh, with a couple of things. I mean, first of all, I'm going to say uh, it's concerning to me. I was made aware just earlier this afternoon that we're still 911 is still getting calls from the public who are saying they have COVID symptoms, thinking that they have somehow if they say they have COVID, they're going to get faster attention from 911. And then when 911 shows up, uh, uh, increased anxiety on the part of the crew. They've donned their their uh, special protective equipment. Lo and behold, they show up and the person said, well, you know, they don't actually have COVID-19 symptoms. They just thought they'd get it. They'd get uh, faster attention. That has to stop. 911 has a process that people will be triaged no matter what symptoms they have and, and get in, get in the, the timely attention that they need based on the urgency of their symptoms. Saying you have COVID will not make sure, will not assure you in any way that you're going to get faster attention. And it causes unnecessary uh, anxiety to the THS crews. And it's a waste of resources of precious personal protective equipment uh, in our healthcare system. Please, public, I know the vast majority of you do but all of the public, we need to uh, act responsibly. And if you need help for the, from the healthcare system, whether it's 911, 811, or wherever, be honest about the symptoms. You will get the attention you need in the time you need it based on the urgency of your situation. And, and, and you don't need to use COVID as a thinking that you're somehow going to get more attention than, than, or faster attention than you will. Uh, it's unfortunate that I have to say this. Uh, I almost have to shake my head thinking I have to talk about this publicly. But I, it's, it's happening enough that I, that I feel I need to. And we need everybody to act responsibly. With that, I'm going to I'll finish off that I know we're, we're, it's Wednesday now. We're heading into the Easter, Easter weekend that uh, is, is, is an important weekend for, for many people. Uh, it is going to be very different this year. I acknowledge that. And it's going to present some different challenges on how we celebrate the Easter weekend uh, and, and, and four days for, for families that are going to look very different than we normally do. However, despite those challenges, those difficulties, it's really important that we need to continue to stay together, working together, following the public health measures that you hear, hear me saying over and over again, practicing good hand washing, personal hygiene, staying home as much as possible, only going out for essential, uh, essential trips, not engaging with the rest of your community unless it's necessary and in doing so in, in groups of less than five or sorry five or less it's critically important that over the next few weeks that we all stick with this and, and if we do this we will get through the easter weekend we will also get through the next through few weeks and come out of this uh, in a brighter side as, as quickly as we're able to